This is from Kevin, who writes, he's in Las Vegas, Nevada. He says, my mom lives in Laughlin, Nevada, where they're introducing wireless internet service for the city. What are the pros and the cons of this service? The important aspect here, in my opinion, is should she keep her cable modem that she already right. has? And I think that this is really the caveat in Kevin's particular question. John, what do you think? Let's define these wireless ISPs and how they differ from satellite. This is kind of like a fourth category that we haven't really talked about. And this is fixed terrestrial wireless, where you have an antenna at your home. Provider has an, an antenna on the earth, and you're transmitting wirelessly back and forth. It solves the problem of needing wires, either coax or telephone line. So it's an easy thing to deploy. The problem is, like any other system, it's shared bandwidth. And the cells are relatively small, so it's, it's easier to overload them than it is cable. If you take a look at the overall technologies, I would say that cable is inherently a better technology if it's available, and I'd keep cable. But the caveat is it'll depend upon the ISP. Right. If you get a bad cable ISP and a really good wireless ISP, a wireless will be better. Well, this is kind of an interesting person. aspect of these wireless ISPs is they are so locally based, right. and they're going to be very specific. This is, uh, I think it's based on the 802.11b standard, and it's microwave. In some senses, it's line of sight. Right. So in certain areas that are very mountainous, this isn't going to work so good. Right. In other areas where it's flat, like Nevada, this is going to be a great standard. Now, the question that I have is, you know, is it a good thing or a bad thing that they're local? You know, the one he's talking about is this Laughlin wireless right. internet. And it looks like a really neat mom and pop shop. It but can be great. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It can be great. Uh, my own ISP is a very small ISP, Sonic.net, up in Sonoma County, California. And they're absolutely terrific. A good small ISP is worth its weight in gold. Customer service, right? Uh, yeah, I know the president by his first name. But they also have limited resources. I've never run into that problem with Sonic but you can with other small ISPs. So there is a risk. Especially with the fallout that's going on with folks whose business right. model is a little unsteady. Right. One without a lot of VENCAP and funding might be more likely to fold right. at a quicker pace. The, the key, I think, is to see what kind of an investment you have to make to get involved and talk to other subscribers. What's right. their experience? Been? That's the interesting thing, and that's why the issue of her already having a cable modem, I right. think, is very pertinent. It's 300 bucks to get the receiver plus 20 bucks a month. Now, if she already has a cable modem and maybe she's paying 40 bucks, she's going to have to use this thing for 10 months a to a time. year to make back the 300 she spends on the receiver box. So in my opinion, it's hard to know if this technology is really going to stand up and not get caught in this dot-com shakeout as we move forward. It's a great concept, and I totally encourage folks who maybe don't have a solution right now to try it out if it's in their area. At the same time, investigate. We don't really know what the speeds are. They've claimed everything from 1 megabit to 11 megabits per second, and we're not really sure. So uh, caveat emptor, but it sounds like a cool concept. Thank I you, agree. John. Thank All right. You. Well, we're in accord. Good. You can stay. You You're can come back. back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John. I appreciate your expertise, and hopefully it's my pleasure. we'll have you back.